All right, Chavos, say good morning, good morning. Let us begin. First of all, a special thank you to Jonas and Kaplan for sponsoring the Mizonos today. Chavos, we thank all of our sponsors, our Tamil Torah sponsors, for the month of E.R. Yona and Shushi Ehrenfeld. In loving memory, and Lezech and Nishmas, their grandfather Yosef and Shmuel Aaron, Benjamin and Elise Wall of Natanya Eretz Yisrael, for dedicating the Shi'urim this month in memory of their dear friend and mentor, Moshe Chaim Ben Tzvi Hirsch. Our week of learning sponsors, Dr. Shmuel and Rabin Karapkin, in commemoration of the first yard site of Shmuel's father, Lipa Ben Yecheskel HaKoin, Zichron Lerach HaShmuel Zachi, now in Eretz Yisrael, I believe. We hope that in the merit of our Talmud Torah, all of the Neshamos will have an Ali and the family Zayn Nechama. We also thank our Dafyomi sponsors today, the Chaver family, for dedicating this year in the Zichos of an Aliyah for the Neshama of Rabbi Meir Balanis, whose yard site is today on Pesach Sheni, and the Ilui Nishmas Mordechai Ben Jalal. We hope that in the merit of our Talmud Torah, first of all, Halavai, Rabbi Meir Balanis, should be a male Yosha for all of Klal Yisrael, Emir Tashem, and in times of tsar and times of difficulty, may his Zichos continue to guide us and protect us. And we hope that in Eretz Hashem, all the Neshamas have an Ali and the family has an Echama. And we thank again the Chaver family for their sponsorship. Rabbi Ose, with that, let us begin. Today's Daf is Samech Tess. Thank you to Rabbi Kalman Akiva for giving this shir yesterday. Hopefully you did your homework. We are picking up on Samech Tess, Ahmed Aleph 69a. And we are picking up two, four, six, seven lines down from the top. So Rabbi Ose, so the Gemara says as follows. The Yimar says, Ve'ima. So it was like continuing in our discussion yesterday, which is really based on the Mishnah that we saw on Samech Zayin Amad Beis. Again, the continued discussion as to pretty much what disqualifies a woman from the ability to consume truma. And remember again, we're consistently dealing with two different types of cases and there's a little bit of a tension. Just, just to frame this and then we'll, we'll, we'll jump back into this. The Gemara says, well, according to the Mishnah already, we saw one typical case is where a Basi Yisrael marries a Kohen. In which case, which is very interesting, her ability to continue to teach Shruma is based on what? Based on what? Her continued connection in some way to her Kohanic husband. Now, as we've established, that connection is really established how? Or as we've, we've right? It's for children. On the flip side, interestingly enough, if a Bas Kohen marries a Yisrael, and then the marriage dissolves. Her ability to eat shruma is dependent on what? Her ability to go back to her, quote unquote, to her father's home, which means the absence of offspring from her Yisrael husband. So you have, you have this interesting tension. So the Gemara says, Why don't we say the following? Why don't we say anyone, right? Any type of marriage that ultimately, again, can create an almana or a grusha, when ultimately, again, there are no children, ki lezara, ka'achla, she has the ability to continue to eat. Ki is lezara, but where there are children, lo achla, mi she'in la almanos v'gerushin ba, but in a situation where there can be no almanos v'gerushin. In other words, in a situation where there's no formative marriage, that's actually going to be the topic of our next Mishnah, even if there is children, she should still continue to be able to eat truma. To which the Gemara says, "Im kain ribuye levia Yisraelis lamali." If that's the case, ultimately, again, why did we have to come to include the case of levia in Yisraelis? Well, Rabbi Akiva the Amar ain kiddushin tovsim mechayve lavin. And according to Rabbi Akiva, who generally says that kiddush is not tovsim mechayve lavin, I will say, remember again, this is an ongoing discussion that we've seen throughout this mesechta. Rabbi Akiva is a minority opinion. Everyone, when I say everyone, I mean everyone else besides Rabbi Akiva holds. That Allah Alamaisa Kiddushin Tov Simbachavi Lavin. So a Kohen tries to a Kohen marries an uh, Kohen marries a Grusha, or a Kohen Godel marries an Almana, or Yisrael is Machzir Grusha, so remarries his divorcee. All of these are situations that are punishable by Allah, they're prohibited. But Allah Alamaisa, according to everyone, everyone except Rabbi Akiva, if you do marry such a woman, the Kiddushin works. Rabbi Akiva is the sole opinion who holds. 
that kiddushin ain't on tovsim mechavei lavin. So the Gemara is according to Rabbi Akiva, Damar ain't kiddushin tovsim mechavei lavin. My kisihia leish zar. Why does the pasuk say if she will marry an ish zar kiti boil? It should say not kisihia, but rather ultimately again because according to Rabbi Akiva, so according to the Gemara, sihia. A lashon of havia is a lashon of marriage. According to Rabbi Akiva, marriage does not work in these circumstances. So why doesn't it just say kisi boil? Because bia would be the disqualifier. So the Gemara says amono so amono ugrusha lamali. And furthermore, again, why do I need the phrase amona and grusha? To which the Gemara says, I'll tell you why. Amona lahachmir aleha, grusha lahakel aleha. Amon is to be machmir. Grusha is to be mekel. What does this mean? I will say, take a look at Rashi. It's Rashi a little bit further down in the dot. It's actually Rashi right across from Tosus Ushnehem. Go right across. Amon ala hachmer kilomar lav leme ute mish yeshla amonas vegerish and ela lugufei itzdrich. Amon ala kedei la hachmer ala. Listen to this. The ilo kasev had the Torah not said amon ala hava mina amonas yisra vihi bas koin techo. So I would have thought as follows. Had the Torah not said Almona, I would have thought an Almona Yisrael. So this is the case of a Bas Kohen who marries a Yisrael. Bas Kohen who marries a Yisrael, now her husband dies. So I would have thought that she is permitted to once again resume eating truma, even though what? Afagav the Isle Zara, even though she has children. In other words, I would not have known that the presence or the existence of children from a Yisrael husband would preclude the Bas Kohen from continuing to eat truma. Furthermore, again, so I will say, therefore, the Pasa comes along and teaches me, Amana, Amana, teaches me that Halacha if a Bas Kohen marries a Yisrael and then she is widowed, she is permitted to resume eating truma. As long as what? As long as what? There are no children with her Yisrael husband. That's what it means, lahachmir. Halachmir means, and if there are children, she cannot resume eating truma. Conversely, grusha lahakel aleha. Finish, continue in that Rashi, grusha. Grusha itzrech lemichtavei rachman lahakel aleha. Ola meimar. Dechi nizkar shem Yisrael lahakel. Dechi les leizara mi Yisrael teichol. Di lo kase hava mina afagav de les leizara. Lo teichol. Kevan de ifsala mikuna mitshuma na mifsala. So we're going to see in just a moment, grusha is to be mekel. See, I'm going to say here's what's fascinating. You might have thought that when a Bas Cohen is divorced from a Yisrael, whether she has children or not, right, she should not be able to eat truma. Now, why would you make such a, such a limud like that? Because also, if you think about it, once a woman is a divorcee, she's already disqualified from the kahuna, right? Now, I would have thought that profound and systemic disqualification from marriage into the kahuna also precludes her from eating truma, whether she has children or not. Kamash Malan, once again, Rabosai, children, offspring, are always the determinant. So essentially, whenever you have a situation of a Bas Kohen who marries a Yisrael, when that marriage ends, or not when, if that marriage ends, either by death or divorce, so she's an Amon or she's a Grusha, the determinant for whether or not she could go back to her father's home and eat Truma is offspring, children. Everything comes down to children. To which the Gemara says, Utsricha, you need both of them. I'll tell you why. Here we go. If the Torah would have just taught me Amana and taught me that if a woman is divorced, the Bas Kohen is divorced from a Yisrael husband and she doesn't have offspring, that she can now continue to teach Ruma. I would have said, Amanahu dichi les zara achla. It's only the case of Amana where if she doesn't have children, she's permitted to go and eat. I should say, she's continued. Well, say, you know, the Lashen is, She's permitted to go back to her father's home and eat truma. Just to be clear, the halacha doesn't actually necessitate her return to her father's home, but rather the way we categorize her state is that after she is divorced from her Yisrael husband, her state of being is a return to her father's home. So I might have thought like this. I would have thought like this, an amana, an amana, when she does not have children, is permitted to go ahead and resume eating truma in her father's home. Why? Because technically speaking, an amana is permitted to marry into the kuhuna. Now both say, you'll say to yourself, is that a totally true statement? Right? No, who can she marry? Kohen Gadol. We don't look at that. In other words, I will say the Kohen Gadol is one guy, is one guy. That we, don't, we don't judge her eligibility for the kuhuna based on the Kohen Gadol. 
אבל גרושה דלא חזי לכהונה, אימה אף אגב דלס לזר לא אכלה, בגרושה, רבו עושה, by dint of being a divorcee, she is never permitted to ever again marry a כהן. I might have thought that even if she doesn't have children, she can't eat truma. So therefore we need the case of grusha. V'yashmei na grusha. And if we would have just said grusha, grusha hidichi islezara lo'ach, la mishum do lachazi lakuna. I might have thought like this. It's only in the case of grusha, where she does have children, that she is precluded from eating truma. Perhaps that's because of her own personal status, that she can't marry a kohen. Aval almana dechazi lakuna, but I might have thought that maybe an Amona, maybe an Amona, even if she does have children from the Israel husband, she should still be permitted to go back and resume eating truma. Why? Because she herself is eligible to go ahead and marry a Kohen. Therefore, Tzricha, Shavu says, so therefore again, both, such, both statements or both words, Amona and Grusha, are necessary. And I both say this is very important. So the bottom line, Halach Lamais, the Gemara is teaching us, is that when the Torah says Amona or Grusha, it means that if a Bas Kohen is married to a Yisrael, and that marriage ends either through death or divorce, we have one simple Shaila. Is the Bas Kohen now eligible to go back to her father's home, metaphoric, quote unquote, and resume eating Truma? And the answer to that question is, right? Yes, as long as there are no children. That's it. And again, the Gemara just went through the exercise of why we need to say both and we couldn't learn one out from the other. Beautiful. So it says the Gemara, Ve'ema nivala lepasula. So I said, why don't we say, when the Bryce said before that if she was nivala lepasula, she had be with someone who was puzzled to her, af machsia grushaso. Maybe that even includes a case of us. In other words, maybe even one becomes ineligible for truma consumption when she has relations with a man who is puzzled to her. Maybe that even includes Machzir Gushaso. Right? You can remember the case of Machzir Gushaso is a very simple case. Ruvain's married to Rachel. Ruvain's married to Rachel. They get divorced. Right? So Rachel then goes ahead and marries Shimon. They get divorced. The prohibition of Machzir Gushaso is that Ruvain cannot remarry Rachel. To be clear, if a man divorces his wife and she has not yet married someone else, they are permitted to get remarried. The prohibition of Machzir Gushaso is only once she goes ahead and marries someone else, then that's the prohibition. So maybe Machzir Gushaso, if a woman has relations with her, with, with her ex-husband, with her first ex-husband, we'll call it, right? And with right? So Rachel has relations with Ruvain. After she divorced Ruvain, divorced Shimon, now she's back with Ruvain. Maybe that shouldn't validate her teach Shuma as well. To which the Gemara says, very interestingly, Ish Zar Amrachmana. Torah says, who invalidates her? Ish Zar. Mi Shazar Etzla Meikara La Fuki Hai Delozar Etzla Meikaru. But it's very interesting. The only person who goes ahead and invalidates her is an Ish Zar, a quote unquote, a strange man. This has, Ruvain is not an Ish Zar. Why is Ruvain not an Ish Zar? She was married to him. Interesting technicality. Ihachi chalal delav zarhu. May karal live. So, so I will say ultimately again. So then why don't we say the same case? Why don't we say halacha ma'is if she has relations with the chalal? Why don't we say also he's also not a zar? And therefore perhaps again he should not pass. Lo amikra lo yichalel zaro ba'amov. Makish zar olo. So I will say the Pasuk says he shall not profane his offspring. Makish zar olo. The Torah compares the offspring to the man himself. Mahu posel, af zar o nami posel. Ultimately, again, just as he invalidates, so to his offspring will invalidate as well. Ve'ima mishas havia. And I will say, furthermore, why don't we say like this? Why don't we say that halacha lemaisa, since the Torah uses the lashon of sihia, which is a lashon of kiddushin, perhaps the woman should become invalidated from truma consumption, Ultimately, from the time of marriage, even before there's a bia, right? Just from kiddushin, to which the gemara says, "The ema mishas havia." Do me at the coin gadol, because we compare it to a coin gadol. What's the case of the coin gadol? So ma coin gadol ba amana bebia av hai nami bebia. Just like the coin gadol only invalidates the amana with bia, so to again here, kiddushin by itself or a marriage by itself is not enough. There has to be a bia. The ema ad ika havia ubia. So maybe there has to be marriage and bia, to which the Gemara says, "Do the coin gadol ba'amana." Once again, I will say, "Coin gadol and amana serves as the paradigm." Ma coin gadol ba'amana be bia luchuda, just like by coin gadol and the amana bia is enough. 
Af hainame bebia lechuda. So to over here, bia has the ability to invalidate this woman from truma consumption even without kiddushin. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says, kol shezaro posel posel, the kol shein zaro posel eno posel. So we'll say the Mishnah Rabbi Yossi came along and said an interesting klal. He said any situation shezaro posel, any union, any union where the offspring is going to be posel, such a man will also invalidate a woman from truma consumption. Okay, so the Gemara says, My Ika ben Tanakama Rabbi Yossi. It sounds like Rabbi Yossi is kind of saying the same exact thing as the Tanakama. So where lies the distinction between these opinions? This is fascinating, Rabbi Yossi. Listen to this. I'm Rabbi Yochanan. Mitzri Sheni va'adomi Sheni Ika ben Aihu. Wow. Rabbi Yossi, the halacha is that a Mitzri, an Egyptian, or an Edomite, who convert, who convert, Rabbi Yossi, halacha lamaisa, their conversion is valid, but they are not permitted to marry into the mainstream Jewish population up until the third generation, which means they can marry other converts or things like that, but they can't marry what we'll call a regular Jewish person, so to speak. When I say regular Jewish person, I mean a person who has been Jewish for multiple generations with no, with no, with no with no issues in terms of yichos. That's the limitation. Also, I'll, I'll point out by today, you understand all of these halachas don't apply contemporarily. In other words, if a person from Egypt comes along and comes along and comes along and wants to convert to today, you know, we don't look at them as a Mitzri convert, right? Halacha lamaisa, that doesn't, because again, remember, Sanchei have already came along and was Mabalbel. He already mixed up all of the nations. In any event, so the Gemara says as follows. So we'll say, listen to this, listen to this. So, here we go. So, we'll say, listen to this. So, first of all, take a look at Rashi, but just before we go, look at Rashi. Second wide line in Rashi. So, we'll say, listen to this. The Gemara is going to suggest. The distinction between Rabbi Yossi and the Tanakama ultimately, again, is in the case of, in the case of um, Mitzri Shani. So I will say, Mitzri Shani, just to be clear, so Mitzri Shani is a second generation Mitzri convert. So just to illustrate this, right, Mitzri 1, right, we'll just call him Mitzri Gai, he converted, right, he's generation 1. He then has children, that's Mitzri Shani, okay, so that's what we're talking about over here, Mitzri Shani, puzzle. And I will say, a Mitzri Shani himself is a puzzle. Puzzle in that he's not permitted to marry into the general pool. But when Mitzri Shani has a kid, what's the status of his kid? What's the status of his kid? Good to go. Totally good to go. To which the Gemara says, to which the Gemara says like this. So here we go. Go back to the Gemara. So Tanakama Savar, Ma Koin Gadol Ba'amana Shabiyasa Ba'averu Posel, Afhai Nami Posel. Tanakama says, Rabbi say. We look at the man in the equation when determining whether or not the particular bia will invalidate a woman from future truma consumption. We look at one thing, the, the, the nature of the man with whom she is engaging in the act of relations. So when an almana has relations with a Kohen Gadol, so the mice again, he's puzzle, right? He puzzles her. At the end of the day, this is a forbidden bia, and therefore halacha lamaisa, she becomes unable to eat truma after this bia. Okay, Rabbi Yos, and therefore I will say, what would we say about a Mitzri Shani? What would Tanakhama say about a Mitzri Shani? Right, same thing, right? Not allowed to have relations with a Mitzri Shani. He's not allowed to marry into the general pool. So it's just like the case of a Kohen Gadol with an Amona. Therefore, bia with a Mitzri Shani would preclude her from future truma consumption. Rabbi Yossi Savrik, a Kohen Gadol, listen to this. Rabbi Yossi says, it's like the case of a Kohen Gadol marries an Amona. Ma Kohen Gadol Shezaro Pasol, Uposel, Afkol Shezaro Posel, Posel. Rabbi Yossi, listen to this. Rabbi Yossi says, yeah, it's just like the case of Kohen Gadol and Amona. Rabbi Yossi, what's unique about the case of Kohen Gadol and Amona? Not only is the Kohen Gadol not permitted to marry an Amona, and the Bia is also, but what else happens? The offspring from that union. Rabbi Yossi, what happens if they have a child? What's the status of the child? Chalal. Child's a chalal. So that, Rabbi Yossi, says, that's the paradigm. That's the paradigm. Whenever you have an act of relations which would create invalid offspring, offspring is when the act of relations itself invalidates the woman from future truma consumption. 
And we'll see what does that come to include? Like exclude, excuse me. Lafuke Mitzri Shani de ain puzzle. The Siv Banamasha Yavadu Lahem Dar Shlishi Yavo Lahem Bakal Hashem. So I will say, listen to this. But so when a Mitzri Shani says, listen to this, this woman has relations with a Mitzri Shani. So here's what's interesting. If they have a child, what's the, what's the status of that child? Kasher, totally fine. So I will say, Kurnitra Biosi, such a beer, even though this beer with the Mitzri Shani is not a sanctioned beer. Right? Halach halamaisa would not invalidate her from eating truma. It's fascinating. Why? Because halach halamaisa kuntra biyosi, the only type of beer that invalidates someone from eating truma is the type of beer which would create offspring which itself is possible. But if the offspring is totally kosher, then even though the beer is asr, even though the beer is asr, ultimately, again, it doesn't invalidate her from going ahead and eating truma. So both say, fundamental machlok is tanakam and rabiosi about do we just look at the act of Bia itself and say if that's Asr, then ultimately again, she becomes invalidated from future Truma consumption, or do we know, do we measure the Bia ultimately again through the, through the status of the offspring? In other words, what, does this, what would this Bia create? If it creates offspring that is possible, then indeed the woman is precluded as a result of the act of Bia from any Truma anymore. But if the offspring is kosher, which is quite fascinating, then the Bia does not invalidate her. Really fascinating. Let's go like this. Says the Gimara of Shem Gamil Omer, Kosha Atanose Bito Atanose Almanuso. Rabbi Shem Gamil says, any time, any time that you're permitted to, a different metric here. Rabbi Shem Gamil says, if you're permitted to marry his, right, no se Bito, Atanose Almanuso. If you're permitted to marry his daughter, right, ultimately again, you can marry his Almano. All right, what's this? My Ika ben Rabbi Yosei, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yosei, what's an Afkamina in this case? So we have between the two opinions, because it sounds like once again, they're saying the same thing. Rabbi Yosei, took a look at Rashi, kol sha'ata, koin no sebita, ata koin no salmanoso. So Rabbi Yosei, any situation where a koin could marry someone's daughter, then another koin could marry, could marry that person's almana. So it says the Gemara, what's the Nafka? I don't understand. It sounds like the same case. It sounds like saying the same thing as the Tanakamo. To which the words, Maika ben Rabiose, Maika ben Rabiose of Shimgam Leo. Amar Ula, so what's the Nafka community between Rabiose of Shimgam Leo? Amar Ula, listen to this. Ger Amoni Umo Avi Ika Benehem. It was, listen to this. The Chilik is a Ger Amoni and, Am- and Moavi. Watch this. From Amon Amoav. So, Ushneim Lom Dua El Mikoin Gadol Amono. Rabbi Yossi Savar, Ma Koin Gadol Ba Amono, Shezaro Posel Uposel, Af Kol Shezaro Posel Uposel. Right? So Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion. Rabbi Yossi says that Halacha Lamaisa, any situation where the offspring is Posel, then ultimately again the Bia Posels as well. And any time where. Good. Rabbi Shimon Lil Savar, Rabbi Shimon Lil says, Ma Koin Gadol Ba Amono, Kol Shezaro Posel Uposel. Af kol shav shekol zaro pasul uposel. The boss says Reb Shigam Lil holds the only time that a bia is going to pasul someone is when the bia is with someone who is under the umbrella of a comprehensive prohibition. Kol zaro pasul. But if someone, let's say, is not prohibited by a comprehensive prohibition, bia with that person will not invalidate the woman from future truma consumption. I will say, what's an example of a non-comprehensive prohibition? Listen to this. The Gemara says, La fuke amoni umo avi de in kol zaro pasal. I will say, good example is to be amoni umo avi. Why? Because the prohibition is not comprehensive. The Amr mar, amoni velo amonis, mo avi velo mo avis. Wow. See, I will say, amoni umo avi, fascinatingly enough, is not the example of a comprehensive prohibition. Because I will say, remember again, a, a convert, when we say, Lo yavo amoni umo'avi bekal Hashem. We will say, what does that mean? Could a man from Ammon and Moab, could they convert? Could they convert? Yes, they can convert, but they are forever limited to a particular pool of marriage. In other words, I will say, it's the same way that a mamzer, right? A mamzer, a mamzer doesn't have to convert, the mamzer is Jewish. Same way that a mamzer is forever confined to a particular limited marital pool, an Amoni and Moavi could also go ahead and convert. But unlike a Mitzri, right, or a Domi, who phase out of the pool in generation three, Amon and Moav always remain in the limited pool. But interestingly enough, it only applies to the male members of Amon and Moav. Incredible. But also, there's, a, there's a good reason for that, right? Because when Sefer brings down, he says, because at the end of the day, the Torah says explicitly, 
Why can't Ammon and Moab, why can't they fully integrate into Klal Yisrael? They did not go ahead and greet us with bread. When we were traveling, there are cousins. They didn't greet us in the desert with bread. So the Sefer Chinuch brings out, the Gemara quotes it also, quotes from the Gemara, that it is quoted from the Gemara, that it's the derech of men to come out and greet others with bread. Right? At least historically, this would have been the, the norm. It's not the derech for women. So therefore, the women are not held accountable from Amnamov. Amun. The women of Amnamov Amun are not held accountable and didn't come out and greet us with bread. And therefore, interestingly enough, the prohibition of marrying into the general pool only applies to the men of Amnamov, Amun Amun, not to the women. So we'll say, so interestingly enough, Rabbi Shingon is introducing something dramatically new over here, which is that halacha lamaisa, halacha lamaisa, um, that halacha lamaisa, sorry, that Allah Chama says only it's only the result of a bia that is part of a comprehensive that is part of a comprehensive um, prohibition that would invalidate the woman from future truma consumption. But if you Allah Chama Isa have a if you Allah Chama Isa have a prohibition or a man that is usher to a woman, but the nature of the isser is not comprehensive and complete, according to Rishon and Gamliel, that would not invalidate her from truma consumption. What's an example of that? If a woman were to have relations with an Ammonite or Moabite convert, right? She's not allowed to. She's not allowed to. According to the Kama, that prohibits her from future truma consumption. But according to Abshem Gamil, it would not because the prohibition is not comprehensive. Incredible. All right, Devosi, let's go right there. I just want to I wanna mention just... Um, sorry. But, uh, I, I meant to mention this at the beginning of the year. It was uh, um, you know on erev Shabbos on erev Shabbos I meant to dedicate the shir. There was um, there was an officer in the Yamam unit who was who was killed during one of the operations in Jenin, Noam Raz Noam Raz, who was forty seven years old and left behind six yisomim. If you read, I encourage you to read. Times of Israel had uh, had just a, an incredible write up about him. And I want to say, you know, it's very striking because these guys, like, no one ever knows about them, right? Because the way these Yamam units work is it's total secrecy, right? I don't know if you saw, but by uh, by the Yom with torch lighting campaign, I think it was the, first, the not campaign, the torch lighting. They, they honored the, one of these uh, commanders and he came like in a mask and then a thing. And I want to say, you know, it's so important to recognize that each and every day in Eretz Yisrael, there are these men and are these women who operate under this veil of secrecy. You know, we, we know about the soldiers that we see, right? And we know about the police officers that, that we see. But then there are all of these people who operate in the shadows and no one knows what they do. No one knows the Mesiras Nefesh. And no one recognizes like the incredible and overwhelming price that they and their families pay. And, you know, we, 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 we just sometimes, it's important just to take a step back and just to have an overwhelming sense of Hakara Satov. Here's a man, 47 years old, who gave his life for Am Yisrael for Eretz Yisrael. Had he not been killed, no one would have ever known, no one would have ever known what he did day in and day out. The man spent the last 22 plus years doing this kind of stuff for Am Yisrael. No one would have ever known Besides the fact that it's an incredible model in chesed, and that sometimes what it means is, you know, too often we need recognition for everything. There's nothing wrong with giving recognition. It's good to give recognition. It's good to recognize people for the good things that they do. But sometimes we do things for the recognition, and you see someone who is literally giving to Am Yisrael every single day, and it was the antithesis of recognition. It only worked because of the bell of secrecy. And I'll say, but how we have to dedicate ourselves. Everyone does something for Cloud Yisrael. We have to figure out what it is that we do. What, 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 are, what are we doing? What are we doing? And even those of us who are here, what is it that we do for Klal Yisrael? And how is it that we, that we advance the agenda of Klal Yisrael in our own small way? Maybe it's through our learning, and maybe it's through our davening, and maybe it's through our chesed. But when you see stories of heroes, of heroes who literally put their lives on the line for Klal Yisrael each and every day, besides the fact that it's humbling, it also reminds us, A, to express our profound hakara satov to all of those men and women who do so much for Klal Yisrael each and every day. And it behooves us to ask ourselves, what am I doing? Not for me, for me, not for me. What am I doing for my people? 
each and every day. We hope that in the merit of our Talmud Torah, that the Neshama of, of Noam Ra should have an Aliyah, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu should comfort his Ammonah and his Yisumim and watch over them in the years to come. All right, Tebose, so the Mishnah says as follows. Tebose, continuing along, continuing along in our Mishnah, so the Mishnah says like this, Ha'ones v'amefateh. So we'll say, continuing along in the same, in the same vein. Ha'ones so v'amefateh. So we'll say, Ones is a man who violates a woman. Mefate is a man who seduces a woman. Vahashota. Now we'll say, now what I want to point out, all of these cases over here, Ones and Mefate obviously are non-marital relationships. Right, so non-marital relationships. Or Shota. Now we'll say, Shota. Shota is a case of a guy, Shota, What's a shota? Someone who lacks mental capacity, who is doing chopa vikidushin. Rashi points out over here, afila ide chopa vikidushin. So I will say, in all of these cases, lo poslin, velo ma'achilin. And I will say, in any of these cases, so I will say, let's say, let's say, a bas kohen, a bas kohen is seduced or a bas kohen is violated. So I will say, that act of relations, right? And let's say the guy was a mamzer. Clearly he is a mamzer, right? But I'm saying, but let's say, right? Let's say he's a halachic mamzer. Right? That would not invalidate her from going ahead and eating truma anymore. Right? That's one, we'll see other examples of this. But the idea being that just a stam act of relations does not go ahead and passel. Furthermore, again, I both say, velo ma'achilin. It also wouldn't entitle a woman to go ahead and eat truma as well. Vim enon ru'in lavo Israel. So what's actually the truth? I take it back. Leave aside the mamzer case because it's actually a wrong example. Listen to this. However, if these men are not able to marry into Klal Yisrael, Hare'elu poslin. Ultimately, again, they can invalidate her from going ahead and eating truma with this bia. Let's see the case. Kesad. Yisrael haba Abbas Kohen. If Yisrael has relations with Abbas Kohen, right? So tochal. Good. Tochal betshuma. So we'll say ultimately again, halakalamaisa, she's permitted to eat truma. Now we'll say, so again, we don't say, we don't say that relations with the Yisrael preclude her from eating truma. So again, we'll say, so this is just um, not a marriage. Not a marriage. Let's say a Yisrael violates a bas kohen. So we don't say that now that act of relations makes her tethered to the Yisrael. Ultimately, she's permitted to go and eat truma. Now we'll say, I'm in base. Now, interestingly enough, Ibra. <coughs> Ibra lo salcha truma. Now watch this. If she goes ahead and if she goes ahead and she becomes pregnant, she becomes pregnant. Then I will say she's not allowed to eat truma. Isn't this fascinating? Because now she's carrying the child of the Yisrael and the cat being pregnant with the child. I will say. By the way, I have to tell you, like this piece of Gemara is so contemporarily relevant as well. Because with all of the conversation of the potential overturning of Roe versus Wade, I will say, there's a lot to talk about. I'm thinking about doing it again, Shavuos night, you know, in Mir Session, because it's a topic we did a couple of years ago, but it might, might require a revisiting. I will say, but one of the fascinating ramifications of this also is, is restricting abortion in cases of rape, in cases of incest, which is a very, very, very serious thing. To, to limit a woman's ability to access that in, in severe circumstances would be, even from a Judaic perspective, something incredibly difficult. But again, not, not, our, not our topic, but I'm just, just fascinating that this is coming up here. So the Gemara says, Ibra, she becomes pregnant. She was violated, she becomes pregnant. From a Shuma perspective, lo socha, but Shuma, she can't eat Shuma. She can't eat Shuma, because now she's pregnant with the Israel's child. Right? Nechta ha'ubra me'eha, we both say, strong lashon, nechta literally means the fetus becomes cut up. What it means is, she miscarries. She miscarries, but the case is she miscarries, but has not yet expelled the fetus. So she, she, the fetus is still in her, but the pregnancy is no longer viable. Tochal. So it's actually very interesting. Halach so once we know already that she has miscarried and the fetus is no longer viable, ultimately she is permitted to once again resume eating truma. Haya koin shaba abas So I'll say the reverse case. Let's say it was a Kohen who violated a Bas Yisrael. But when I say violated, it could be violated, it could be seduced. E e either case, lo so chuma. So we'll say, relations with a Kohen does not enable you to eat truma. Right? Very important. Ibra, we'll say if she, become, if she became pregnant, so now you have a, Yis a Yisraelis who became, a Bas Yisrael became pregnant by a Kohen. Lo so chal. So we'll say it's very interesting. So, so unlike, see, in, in the previous case, 
when the Bas Kohen becomes pregnant from Yisrael, the pregnancy precludes her from eating truma, from eating truma. The reverse case of a Bas Kohen who impregnates a Yisraelis, the pregnancy does not entitle her to eat truma. Which I'll say, by the way, if you think about it, if you think about it, if you look at truma as a Dava Ruchni, as a Dava Ruchni, what it tells you is something so incredibly profound. It takes much less to lose your Ruchnius than it does to acquire your Ruchnius. Right? You could lose your Ruchnius one, two, three, pretty easy. To acquire Ruchnius, right? To acquire spirituality, to acquire truma, so to speak. That takes a lot more effort. Incredible. So the Gemara says, Nimsa lo sochal, yolda sochal. But interestingly enough, if the Israelis impregnated by the Kohen gives birth to a baby, then what? Then what? That child enables her to eat truma. Interestingly enough, Nimsa kochal shabin gadol mishal av. The Gemara says, sometimes you see that the Kohach of the son is even greater than the father. Meaning what? that when the Kohen impregnated this woman, so the fact that he got her pregnant does not enable her to eat truma. What does enable her to eat truma? The child that is born. Nimsa koach haben gadol mishel av. So I will say a very, a very profound statement also, also in terms of rochnius. And I will say, sometimes in life, sometimes in life, we're waiting for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the av, to take action. And what we don't realize is that sometimes at the end of the day, the Ribbono Shalom is waiting for us to take action. God says, why are you waiting for me? You affect change. Nimsa koach kocho shalbein godl mi koach shalav. I will say, sometimes kibi the strength of the son, the strength of the Jew, is greater than the strength of HaKadosh Baruch. Why say kibi Because, of course, that's not a literal statement. But sometimes in life, again, we're waiting for God to be the vehicle of change. When HaKadosh Baruch was saying to us, I'm waiting for you to be the vehicle of change. Don't underestimate your own koach. Don't underestimate your own power. So the Gemara goes weiter. So the Gemara says, Ha'eved posel mishum bia, pina posel mishum zera. The boss says, interesting case. If an Eved has relations with a woman, those relations, that bia, will preclude her from eating truma. But interestingly enough, does not possible because of offspring. Now what does that mean? What's the case? Here we go. Really fascinating case. Ketzad. Bas Yisrael the Kohen, right? If a Bas Yisrael marries a Kohen, right? U Bas Kohen the Yisrael. So here's the case. Regular marriage. A Bas Yisrael marries a Kohen, or a Bas Kohen marries a Yisrael. Either way, the Yolda Hemenu Ben. And I both say they have a child. They have a child. The Yolda Hemenu Ben, right? Okay. The Halach Ben. So I both say, so j- just to illustrate this case, right? So either, either way, Bas Yisrael marries a Kohen, Bas Kohen marries a Yisrael. They have a son. The son The son has relations with the shivcha. Has relations with the shivcha. The yolda a ben, and now the son has relations with the shivcha. And now what? They have a son. They have a son. So I will say now. Listen to this. So I will say now. What's the status of that son? Hare ze eved. Then I will say when the son has a child with the shivcha, the status of that son is he's an eved. Then I will say now. Watch this. Now watch this. Now here's the shaila. What, what's the impact of an Evet grandson upon the grandmothers? That, that's really our Shiloh, because right, we have two potential grandmothers in this case. Grandmother, grandmother number one was a Bas Yisrael who married a Kohen. Right? Grandmother number two was a Bas Kohen who married a Yisrael. Now, I will say, now watch this. This is incredible. Listen to this. Im, so the Gemara says, Hi, saw. Aim of if Bas Yisrael. So we'll say if we're dealing with the case, ultimately, so we'll say so just to illustrate. Let, let's let's do this case one at a time. All right. So case number one, Bas Yisrael marries a Kohen. Right. What happens when she marries a Kohen? What could she have? What could she have? Truma. Okay. They have a son. Beautiful. Son has relations with the Shifcha. Now they have what? A son. Then I will say, watch this. Let's say son dies, husband dies. So I both say, who's left in the picture over here? Who's left in the picture? Grandma, right? Now, grandma, now, what is grandma? What is grandma? Right? Grandma is a Bas Yisrael. Now, I both say, now, remember again, who was married to a Kohen. Now, if grandma Bas Yisrael wants to continue eating truma, what does she need? What does she need? Offspring. What's the only offspring she has in this case? Right? An avid grandson. Right? Poor woman. Right? This is like a, this is what my son left. 
right? Right? This is what you can hear the speech, right? You can hear it, right? So we'll say her remaining offspring is an avid grandson. So watch this. Im, so listen to this. Im bas Yisrael Kohen, lo so we'll say in this case, if her only offspring, if her only offspring is an avid grandson, she cannot, essentially we'll say having an avid grandson is the same thing as what? Having no offspring at all. And therefore, she cannot go ahead and eat truma. Conversely, Rabbi said, let's go with the other case, where grandma was a bas Cohen who married a Yisrael. They had a son. They had a son. Son, Rabbi said, now remember, what happens if a bas Cohen marries a Yisrael? What happens if a bas Cohen marries, what happens if a bas Cohen marries a Yisrael? No more truma, right? They have a son. They have a son, right? Son has relations with the shivcha. They have a son. Now what happens? Son died. Husband died. The only two remaining relatives in this family are who? Grandma, who's a what? Bas Cohen, and her grandson. What's her status now? She can go back and eat truma in her father's home. Why? Why I will say? Because essentially, she has no remaining offspring. Right? Her husband died, her biological son died, and the only remaining relative is her Eved grandson, who halachically is not her relative. So therefore, again, she is a Bas Cohen who has no longer any level of relationship to her Yisrael husband's family, or to her family also. Therefore, she reverts back to the status of being a Bas Kohen. Incredible. So the Gemara says, Bas Kohen li Yisrael, I'm sorry, E'eim aviv Bas Yisrael Kohen lo so'ach abutruma. Bas Kohen li Yisrael to'ach abutruma. Incredible. Both say those are the two cases. Fascinating. Mamzer posal umachil. Now both say the case of a Mamzer. A Mamzer, right, when he has relations with a woman, Ultimately, again, is posal umachil. What does that mean? Kate said, here we go. Bas Yisrael a Kohen, or Bas Kohen the Yisrael. So the boss said, listen to this. If a Bas Yisrael marries a Kohen, or a Bas Kohen marries Yisrael, the Yolda Hemenu Bas, and they have a child, they have a daughter, one daughter. Vaholcha habas v'niseis li eved, or li ovei kochavim. And the boss said, Nebach, what happens? The only child, the daughter, goes and marries an eved, or a guy. An Evid or an Ovid Kochavim. Now, I'll say now again, now remember again. So fine. Viol de Hemenu Ben. And now what happens? The daughter and her and her Evid or Guy husband have a son. So I'll say this is a wild Mishnah. Harezim Mamzer. Now, I'll say this is pretty extreme. The Mishnah is reflecting the view that when you have a child from Chayve Lavin, that child is a Mamzer. Okay, so let's, let's, now we don't pass in this way, right? We're going to say, we pass in when a Jewish woman marries an Eved or a guy. What's the status of a child? Jewish. Jewish through and through. Through and through. We're going to say, so again, there's discussions if it's a daughter. There's discussions about a daughter, about marrying a Kohen with a knife, if she has a non-Jewish father. But again, leaving that aside, but our mission is going with the view that such a child is called a Mamzer. Okay, now we'll say, now watch this. Say, so here we go. Here we go. So we'll say, so just keep in mind the family tree. Let's go one case at a time. Now watch this. Watch this. Let's go through this. So let's go with the first case. Case number one was Bas Yisrael married a Kohen. So when she marries a Kohen, what is she entitled to have? Truma. Now she has a daughter. All is good, right? All is good. Daughter marries a guy. Not so good, right? Then what happens? They have a child. The child is a mamzer. Now Bas let's go back. Daughter dies. Husband dies. Is is the Israelis permitted to continue to eat truma? And the answer is yes. Why? Because even though her grandson is a mamzer, nevertheless, what? Nevertheless, what? Halach Lama is a Jewish, right? The mamzer is a Jew, and therefore, again, the presence of Jewish offspring enables her to continue to eat truma. Right? truma. Conversely, Rabbi says go backwards. Right? Let's say Grandma was a bas Cohen who married a Yisrael. They then have a daughter, right? Fine. Every, so remember, when Kohanes, when Bas Kohen marries Yisrael, what happens to her? What happens to her? No more truma for her. They now have a daughter. Daughter marries a guy. They have a child. Child's a mamzer. Now what happens? Daughter dies. Husband dies. Who's left in the family? So Bas Kohen grandma, together with mamzer grandson. Could she eat truma? Could she? No. Why? because she has remaining offspring from her Yisrael husband. So I'll say it's the same case, same, right? S same exact thing. In other words, what we do is the, the nature and quality of the offspring has a dramatic impact on grandma. Incredible. 
So the Gemara says, Coin God, so listen to this. We'll say, this is actually a, this is, this is such a great case. Coin God, listen to this. I will say, so we just spoke about a case where your grandchild is a mamzer. It happens, right? Now, listen to this. I will say, there are times where even your grandson could be the coin Godel, and it could still preclude grandma from eating truma. Watch this. This is so great. So coin Godel, Pamushu Po, so listen to this. Sometimes the coin Godel could preclude his grandmother from eating truma. How could that happen? Kate said, Bas coin the Yisrael, the other hemen Bas. So we'll say, here's the case. A Bas coin marries the Yisrael. It's fine, no problem. They have a daughter. And then the daughter went ahead and married a Kohen, the Yaldem and a Ben. And then they have a son. So what's the way to this case outside? This is great. It's great. Listen to this. Bas Kohen marries the Yisrael. Bas Kohen marries the Yisrael. Fine. What happens when she, what happens when Bas Kohen marries the Yisrael? What happens? What happens? She can't eat Truma. Can't eat Truma. Okay, fine. Legitimate marriage, everything is good. They have a daughter, Mazel Tov. Daughter marries a Kohen. Daughter marries a Kohen. I tell all my girls, by the way, I just have, I want one of my girls to marry a Kohen. My greatest wish in life is to be a Kohen. It's to be a Kohen. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. I, I still have a hope, it's still a possibility for Kohanic grandsons. And so I tell my, my daughters, no pressure. But it's the only thing I want in life, right? No, no, no pressure, but it's the only thing. But, but whatever, it's fine. It's not a big deal. So, 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 I, so, 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 here, so here's what happens over here. So what happens? So I will say, so now, so now what ends up happening? So now, Kohanes, right? Bas Kohen, marries the Israel. No truma for her. Fine. They have a daughter. Mazel Tov. Daughter marries a Kohen. Daughter marries a Kohen. Mazel Tov. And now what happens? I will say, watch this. Now let's say daughter marries a coin, they have a son. This son, Gadol Shabik Dolim, and Mamish, he's the coin Gadol. He's the coin Gadol. Now watch what happens. Now, what happens? Daughter passes away, husband passes away, and so the only two people left in the family are who? Right? Grandma, Bas Cohen, and grandson coin Gadol. Guess what, Rabosai? Grandson coin Gadol prevents grandma, Bas Cohen, from eating truma. Why? Because remember again, Kohen Gadol's grandson is the remnant of the offspring of her marriage to her Yisrael husband. And as long as she, there is biological offspring from her marriage to her Yisrael husband, she is precluded, quote unquote, from going back to her father's home and eating truma. So I says, wow, by the way, this is a good shot, this table discussion, right? So you could have a case of a Bas Kohen grandmother with a Kohen Gadol grandson who is not permitted to eat truma. Because again, the Kohen Gadol grandson is the offspring of her marriage to her Yisrael husband. She and her Yisrael husband have a daughter. This is the daughter's son. This grandson is the Kohen Gadol, it's true. But he's the grandson, he's the offspring of her marriage to the Yisrael, which precludes her from eating truma wild. To which the Gemara said, this is incredible. Zoso Meres, this is what people sometimes say, Anything but a son who's a coin gadol who prevents me from eating truma. I guess it flows better in the Hebrew than it does in the English, right? So I'll say, so what it's saying is, you know, which is also fascinating, I'll say that sometimes you know, everybody wants nachas from their children, but we also want personal happiness as well. So I'll say, so sometimes when my nachas conflicts with my personal, with my personal, right? There's an expression, there's an expression. I shouldn't have offspring like a coin gadol who prevents me from eating truma. Okay, I will say just an interesting case. Let's go back. It says the Gemara. Tanino, let's go back to the beginning of the Mishnah. The Mishnah said that Allah Chalam Isa, I will say a Shota. So let's say, for example, I will say, let's say, for example, a Shota, right? Let's say a Kohen who is a Shota. So a Kohen who, la who lacks mental capacity marries a woman. Marries a woman. So the Mishnah said that Chupa and Kiddushin with a Shota does not allow her to eat Truma. Why not? Because it's not a valid chuppah and kiddushin. Why? Because he lacks capacity. So I will say first wide line. So we've already learned this. That a shota and a katan who affect marriage. And then let's say they die without children. Their wives are not subject to human chalitza. Why are their wives not subject to human chalitza? Why? Because there was no marriage. So the same way that they're not subject to human chalitza. The same idea is that halacha 
Halach Maisa, if these if the shota or the katan is a kohen, they would not entitle their wives to truma with this marriage. Incredible. Kate said, "Hi, so Shaba Abbas kohen tocha b'truma ibra lo tocha." So we'll see. Here we go. Remember again the second case of the Mishnah. If the Yisrael, right? If the Yisrael has relations with uh, Abbas kohen, we'll say not marriage. She has relations with her. So again, if she becomes pregnant, if she becomes pregnant. Then halacha lemai. I'm sorry. This was the Yisrael who has relations with a bas kohen, right? If she becomes pregnant, she's not permitted to eat truma. Now again, there are two possibilities. If she miscarries, then what's the halacha? She could go back to eating truma. If she gives birth to a viable baby, then halacha lemaisa, she is precluded from eating truma. So the Gemara says kevan de ibra lo sechol. So now that she told me that halacha lemaisa, once she becomes pregnant, she can't eat truma. I lechosh shema ibra. They will say, now here's what's interesting. So the way this sounds is like this. Let's play this out. Yisrael has relations with the Bas Kohen. Has relations with the Bas Kohen. So what did we say? If Halacha Lamaisa, she becomes pregnant, if she becomes pregnant, then Halacha Lamaisa, she's not permitted to eat Shuma. So it sounds like when is she not permitted to eat Shuma as of? From the moment that what? We know she's pregnant. Which sounds like from the time of the act of relations until we know that she's pregnant, she can eat Shuma. To which the Gemara says, but why? Why, why aren't we choshish, lechosh? Why do we say, right after relations, she should not be permitted to eat truma out of concern that maybe she's pregnant? Milotna, did we not learn? Mafrishin osan gimel chadashim. Remember again, we had this interesting case. This was the case where, where ultimately two couples got married and there was a mix up at the chuppah. It happens, right? right? It happens, mix up. Right? And we're not sure who lived with who. So I will say, so what has to happen? Everybody needs to separate from relations for three months in order to be able to ascertain if anyone's pregnant and who they're pregnant from. So we see a precedent for being, in other words, we don't say, oh, it was just one act of relations, maybe they're not pregnant. Right? So we see that even after one act of relations occurs, we have to be concerned for pregnancy. So why don't we say that halacha lemaisa, right after this Kohen has relations with the, ba I'm sorry, right after the Israel has relations with the Bas Kohen, she can't eat Shuma as of when? As of now. As of now. And we're going to wait to see if she's pregnant. To which the Gemara says, Arab Arbachano, Liyuchsin Chashashu, Lechuma Lo Chashashu. They both say for Yuchsin. In other words, in terms of, in terms of establishing, in terms of establishing paternity, that's where we're Machmir. For Truma, we're not Machmir. And they both say what that means is for Truma, we don't assume a woman is pregnant until when? Until when? Until we know she's pregnant. So the Gemara says, Is that true? That Allah said for Truma, we're not Choshesh for pregnancy right after the Biyah? But Tanya, we learned, If a man says to a woman, I'm giving you a get, and it should be retroactively valid one moment before my death. Then I both say, Why would someone give a get like this to his wife? Right? Why? He wants to avoid Yibum. So I both say, What he wants is he puts in a retroactivity clause. That essentially says, this is your get, that, and I'm giving it to you now, but it's only valid one moment before my death. So when he dies, the get is retroactively valid, and ultimately, again, saves her from, saves her, whatever, we'll call it, saves her from Yibum, to which most of said, but if you give a get like that, Asura Le'echo B'Truma Miyad. They both say, Halacha Le'Maisi, here's what's interesting. That works, it works, but there's an interesting byproduct or repercussion, which is, she can't eat truma. And I will say, why can't she eat truma? Why can't she eat truma? Because we're, he could die any minute. He could die any minute. So I will say, when she's chomping down on truma now, it could be he dies the next moment. Retroactively, she has a get. If she's a grusha, if she's a divorcee, she's not permitted to eat truma. So halacha lamay say again, so I will say, what do you see? Now, what do you see from this? You see from this that we are choshesh for things, right? We are choshesh for change in status. To which the Gemara says, um, yeah, the idea is we prevent her from any truma in that case because we're concerned that maybe he's going to die. In other words, that we answer truma consumption because of suffolk. So too over here, when the Bas coin had relations with the Israel, we should tell her you can't eat truma now, already starting now, suffolk, maybe you're pregnant. So, this is very interesting. The truth is, Chazal were only choshesh in a case of marriage, 
weren't choshesh in a case of znos. Why, Rabbi Osai? This is actually very interesting. When the woman engages in an act of snus, we assume that she takes certain contraceptive measures in order to prevent becoming pregnant. So I will say whether that's the usage of a moch, which is like some type of barrier, absorbent cloth, or ultimately, again, what we've seen that at least the Talmudic form of contraception was gravity, right? Going ahead and jumping up and down after Bia, so that Lamaisa, again, the, the zera, the semen, does not take root. So the idea being is we assume that if a woman's going to engage in active snus, she's also taking steps afterwards to not become pregnant. And therefore, they don't have to be choshesh that she's pregnant after Bia, unless what? Or until when? Until when? Until we know that she is pregnant. So the Gemara Subach, Obinisu Loch Micha Shashu. And ultimately, I will say, so now what's interesting about this answer is we assume that in marriage, we assume that after Bia, there is the immediate potential of pregnancy. Is that true? The Gemara Subach, Tanya, was listen to this case. Bas Kohen Shini says, Li Yisrael, Umeis. If a Bas Kohen married a Yisrael, she married a Yisrael. Ultimately, I will remember again, when she marries a Yisrael, what happens to her truma consumption? What happens? Done, right? It's done. Now, say, now what happens? He dies. He dies. Now her husband died and no offspring. So I say, what's that? Huh? Toveles, she goes to the mikvah, and she could eat truma that night. Then I both say, based on this, what are we not concerned about? What are we not concerned about? That she, why, how, why are we concerned that she's pregnant from her husband? Always say she has to go to the mikvah and she could eat truma that night. So this is a case of marriage. You see, even in marriage, we're not choshesh for pregnancy. Vatanya, we learned, Baskai, Amar Achista, Toveles, Vaocheles, Ad Arboim. Rav Chista says, the truth is, she could go ahead and go to the mikvah and eat truma as long as we are within 40 days of her active relations with her husband. Why, Rabbi Osei? Di'i lo ma'abra, halo ma'abra. Because Rabbi Osei, during the first 40 days after Bia, there's one of two possibilities. Either she's not pregnant. If she's not pregnant, she's not pregnant. Vi'i ma'abra ad arboim, ad arboim ma'ye ba'almahi. Wow. Rabbi Osei, the halachic view of pregnancy is that for the first 40 days of pregnancy, the pregnancy is nothing. The pregnancy is maya ba'alma, is ultimately just water, just water. It is not considered, which I will say is incredibly profound. I will just tell you, this is not our topic for now. But I will say one of the interesting things, you know, one of the, one of the, there's something called the morning after pill, right? And the morning after pill, kishmo kinhu, is a pill that one could take that if there is any type of fertilization that, could, that took place could, so I will say, interestingly enough, Again, it's a much more informed discussion, but it's fascinating to see that halacha allows for many, many, many things within the first 40 days of pregnancy that often become halachically impossible after the first 40 days of pregnancy. So we'll say, Sigmar says like this, we're talking about the first 40 days. So ultimately, we'll say, in other words, the easy way to illustrate this was, let's say, for example, Bas Koin marries Yisrael. Bas Koin marries Yisrael, right? So wedding night, he dies the next morning. He dies the next morning. So I will say, in a case like this, we say, okay, go to the mikvah, eat truma, go back to your father's home, eat truma. So the Gemara says, well, let's analyze this. What's going to happen, right? If she's, if she's not pregnant, if she's not pregnant, she's not pregnant. If she is pregnant, if she is pregnant, so we'll say, if she is pregnant, then for the first 40 days anyway, it's just water. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. And therefore, again, there would be no problem for her to go ahead and eat truma. Now, once we know she becomes pregnant, then Enochinami, she would have to stop eating truma. Amrulabai Abai says, Ihachi, if that's the case, Ema Seifa, Hokar Ubra Mimea, Teimikul Kalas Lamafreya. So I will say, I, but Abai said, if that's the case, but then, I will say, in that case, when she becomes pregnant, doesn't it turn out that she was a pregnant, she was a pregnant Baskoin who from, from Israel was eating truma all of this time, and she should become liable to Lamafreya? Now, Abai what does Lamafreya mean? Doesn't Lamafreya mean all the way back? To a first act of Bia, no, 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 my Mikul Keles, Ad Arboim. Ultimately, again, it means Mikul Keles up until 40 days. In other words, I will say that for the first 40 days, Halacha Lamaisa, Halacha Lamaisa, we don't view it as a pregnancy. See, even if there is some level of liability, at most the liability extends back to day 41 and not any further than that. I will say, we'll stop over here. We'll stop over here for today. But I will say, again, what you begin to see is something incredibly amazing. That halacha lamaisa, halacha lamaisa, this case, just so you see, that in the case of znus, 
we're not koshish for pregnancy. That's what's really coming down over here. Because I will say, this is why, in the case of a Bas Kohen, a Bas Kohen, ultimately, again, who has relations with the Yisrael, ultimately, after the act of relations, Halakha Lamai says she's permitted to teach Truma. The only time she's not permitted to teach Truma is when? Is when? When we know, she be, when we know she's pregnant. But up on, and so if she's not pregnant, she can see Truma. If she, we know she becomes pregnant, at that point in time, her Truma window closes. Rabbi Osi will continue with this sugi tomorrow. Shkoyach. Another exciting week ahead of us. Great day. Forty days yesterday, and medically speaking, the, the doctors, the scientists, they say they can't detect any heartbeats or.